Hello, this is part four of my talk to families about word study, and you can see that we're looking at upper level word study in two stages, syllables and affixes, and derivational relations. Uh, this, the stages last your lifetime. I'm going to go quickly, as you'll see, uh, and give you some resources, but it's only just a flavor of what you might expect to learn about these stages. So here are the two chapters in Words Their Way and the materials that you, where you, you can find the handouts. And these are the books. Uh, I would guide you to Words Their Way, uh, Vocabulary Their Way, second edition. Uh, this whole book is about upper level word study. Uh, again, there's the core text on the far left, uh, sixth edition. In the top right, we have our Words Their Way uh, with struggling readers that focuses on 412. Um, good. And we also have materials, obviously, in our parent book, and that should suffice for most families. We're looking at morphology in these two stages during the syllables and affixes. We're looking at inflected morphology and derivational relations. We're looking at derivational morphology. Uh, again, upper level word knowledge. We want people to think about generative morphology in vocabulary instruction. And I'll show you what that means. Generative morphology. This is the third layer, the meaning layer, where we get into morphology. Uh, when I think about generative morphology, I think of what our friend Tamara Barron said, uh, when we learn one word, we learn 10. And when we introduce a root to students, uh, learning becomes uh, exponential. So don't think about just teaching one word, think about teaching 10 words. So if you want to teach a, the word encourage, think about all the related words that come with encourage. And you might also think about across languages, uh, courage, uh, courageous, heart in French. So show students how to think about words um, and how vocabulary is used to refine our thinking. Uh, we find that kids, our friend uh, Sherry Nielsen talked about interviewing students, uh, Sherry Dunn, and talking about introducing students to word study and later on, many years later, asking them what was important in their lives. And they said, no one ever talked to me about words the way that you did. So try to find ways to talking to your children about words. Take words apart, delete suffixes and prefixes, add syllables. These are techniques that teachers, we teach teachers. And I'm going to show you some of the activities and you're welcome to try them out. Think of related words and make, above all, make the meaning connection. So in the intermediate stage of reading, these students are in the syllables and affixes stage of spelling. They are using but confusing polysyllabic patterns, let's say the uh, consonant doubling, uh, when you change Y to I. They're looking at inflected morphology again. So here's a fourth grade teacher uh, who we discussed in part three. At the bottom right, you can see the students had already sorted. And then now she's working on charting and unpacking some of these ideas. In the first column, no change. In the middle column, consonant doubling and E drop in the final column. This is a fifth grade teacher who you can find on our PD toolkit. And she's working with suffixes, as you can see here at the top, and the students are sorting the words by final suffixes. And they're looking at prefixes, suffixes, and both. Generative vocabulary, we look at domain-specific vocabulary and general academic. And we haven't talked about these latter, uh, so we have something called academic vocabulary. And first there's the general academic, which uh, I'll show you, and then the domain specific. So we know that uh, morphology is important to teach. It improves comprehension. This is some of the research-based 
that you're welcome to pursue? That last point is useful to think about, that 82% of the vocabulary words on this list that I'm going to share, or more to the point, so much of the vocabulary that students learn in their content studies, their disciplinary studies, their um, domain-specific vocabulary in those disciplines, it comes from the Greek and Latin. So academic vocabulary is everywhere. It's omnipresent. It's related to achievement. And we want to consider word families, those um, 10 words that we were talking about. So first, let's look at general academic vocabulary. And this is part of the Coxhead list. It, you can see that these words exist in all textbooks per near. Legislation, well, you don't see that in science as much, but you need to know what these words mean across disciplines. So when I'm teaching the word analyze, I want to think of related words, analytic, analyzer. Or if I'm working on the word very in the third column, I will look at the words that are related to the word very. This helps students learn it. And then we look at domain-specific vocabulary, like in mathematics. And we'll take apart these words and look at geo words at the bottom of the first column, or hexagon words, uh, uh, those gone words. Or we'll take a word like subtract and look at the suffix, uh, the prefix and the root, the sub as the prefix, and it's uh, many spellings of sub. Anthropology, biology, these are all good science terms to investigate. What does thermal mean? What does geo mean? And so uh, Kevin Flanagan is the first author on this words that are way vocabulary for American history. And I'm going to share with you some of the slides from this book. Uh, while we're teaching uh, uni or union, why not go deeper? And so we're looking at deep word study. This is from Emancipate. And look at the derived words in the first column and common phrases that help the words to stick uh, stronger than sentences, one might think. Or let's talk about these phrases, emancipation of labor, and then gradually that turns into a sentence. These ca phrases capture the ideas. And then for word parts, it's interesting to think about our grammar fits into the word parts, but also our roots, like man here, and the various manifestations of man. And here's another uh, page from this book, Words That Are Way Vocabulary for American History, Domain Specific, General Academic, and then words that we think we can generate some uh, related words to improve the concept development. We do want to remember uh, uh, cognates across languages. What, is, what words do we choose for word study? If you take this first sentence from the Declaration of Independence, where will we concentrate? And this is where I turn to students, where I want to talk about the ideas. What does self-evident mean? What is a truth? Endowed? This is difficult vocabulary, and this is these close reads. Uh, this is one sentence where we can really spend some time unpacking the ideas and the vocabulary. So these are some of the activities that we explore uh, when we're teaching academic vocabulary. But we want to make it fun and not too exhausting and not memorization. Uh, we want to grow concepts. We want to conduct uh, develop concept maps, chart related words. The vocabulary notebook, this fourth button, becomes very important. Here are some academic word banks. These are more general academic. Our students are uh, uh, tweeting each other the root webs that they are developing with their students, in this case, port. Case port. Or fur, I certainly like that one. Uh, 
You'll find these online. We give you some websites you'll see in a minute. But we'll help the students to create these uh, webs. We do have a specific sequence for uh, teaching affixes and roots. And students will chart them. We develop root trees with speck or with duct. These are some of the resources that we use for upper level word study. Do take a look. They come around all the time. I see dictionary.com is not on there. There are a, a, a plethora of word study websites. Here's one look. These are some of the books that you can find online that have little word histories in them. We have fun with illusions and mythology. All of these words come from mythology. Here's some fifth graders looking at uh, the, this is artwork to me, but uh, at the end of a word, a suffix for T-E-N to hold is T-A-I-N. And so you can see that students are developing these charts and writing about them in this last one. That's their observation of why T-A-I-N uh, is at the end of words and what it means. So these are some of the books that you've seen in our work. Uh, uh, please feel free to go to them. And uh, this is just out. And these are mater uh, some materials and references for you to peruse as you may have interest. So I have enjoyed working with you. And I thank you for working uh, with me.